explore maps of Tuckerton, New Jersey, and meet local historian and author Thomas Applegate. He will tell us a little bit about his experience researching local history and some interesting stories about the early days of Tuckerton. We will also learn the importance that historical societies play in keeping local history and culture alive. Hi, my name is Thomas F. Applegate, and uh, I live in Tuckerton, New Jersey now, and my family has always been from Tuckerton, New Jersey, on my mother's side, but not my father's side. My mother's side goes back to the Germans, the Quins, the Gastros, the Mots, so our family I'm related to almost everybody in this town. And my father was from Haddonfield, and they met during the Depression when he came down here to fish. Then he met the Zermans and ended up marrying my mother, like after dating for seven years during the Depression. The Tucker Historic Society is located right down the road from the seaport, and it has uh, quite a bit of history in it for everything in Tucker. So it's like family trees and everything there. So it's a great place to go and research for things. There are a collection of everything. So that they collect maps, they collect old diaries, anything they can get that's old history that tells them about things in the past. And people bring things in all the time, the, the historic site. And it, it's all, you know, categorized in different sections so that if somebody wants to come searching for a certain name or a certain person or a certain section of town, they can steer them in the right direction without spending a lot of time searching in where they need to be. When you're searching your family tree, you can find a lot of history in the census records. Here's an example right here. Here's a man named Kelly. And it says he's the head of the house. And it tells you he's, he was born in May 1862. He's 38 years old. He was born in New Jersey. His father's in, from New Jersey, and his mother's from New Jersey. <clears throat> and it says he's a railroad conductor. So it gives you a lot of information in the census records. And you can search this year, every ten <clears throat> every ten years it changes, so you can find track him down and just trace it. And he also tells you his wife's name and says wife and his son, son, daughter, their year, their birth year, how age they are. And over here it tells you like the daughter's at school and another one's a day they were. So you find a lot of information from the census records. This is a book that I wrote about Tucker. Uh, because I have so much family history in Tucker, and I've always been interested in the history. So researching and finding out things, and I figured, well, I'll put it in a book so everybody can learn what I know. So I went down Main Street and took a picture of every house, every building, every empty lot. Then I started into the Historic Society and researched back. 90% of what's in this book came from the Historic Society. And it's, I did search back 100 years, 200 years, and found what was there and, and put it and compared to what was then and what's now. So it's the whole basis of the book. And <clears throat> I'm now working on my second book, The Green Street, North and South, which is almost completed. So, and that actually got bigger. It's twice as thick because there's so much more history on Green Street than there is on Main Street, which I was surprised to learn. You can buy this copy at the seaport. You can buy a copy at the Emporium, you can buy it at the Historic Society, or you can call me and you buy it from me directly. Uh, I've always written stories. As a little kid, I wrote stories. I love to write stories about people and things. <coughs> and I actually, when I lived in Hanfield, I got some published in the little local paper, the Hanfield Gazette it was. So it's just showing what, you know, I remember as a kid growing up, you know, swimming pools and stuff like that, and different things. So, so it's, I was always, always interested in history. I was told that I have to have a, a degree to be an author, but I just wrote this book and I made copies of it, and I'm selling them. So that's it. Uh, history of Tucker, uh, if you go back to just when Ebenezer Tucker was here, and he changed the name from Clamtown to Tuckerton, and he had a big uh, dinner at the his hotel in the center of town, and he invited everybody in town to dinner, and he suggested to change the name to Tuckerton. And they well, had a great dinner, so they said okay. So it was changed since then. Originally, Tuckerton was uh, actually Little Lake Harbor, and it was 1909 that Tuckerton incorporated on its own city, it became a city surrounded by Little Lake Harbor. All right, timeline of Tuckerton. Uh, in, in 
1789, George Washington was president, and then in the life of uh, Ebenezer Tucker, he lived through George Washington, John Adams, James Madison, James Monroe, John Quincy Adams, Andrew Jackson, and Rupert Hayes, and James Garfield, Garfield and Grover Cleveland, and that's uh, when uh, Ebenezer Tucker passed away. So very, he seemed very, very many presidents in his lifetime. And here's a, a map of uh, Tucker, which I show. It's all. It's not. It's not an accurate map, so it's not the scale, and it shows things out of proportion. So it's a misleading map, and a map should tell you accurate things, not misleading things. This is a map about Tucker. And uh, you can see the important part about the map is the name Tuckerton. And right underneath the, the name Tuckerton, it has the date, 1878. So it's a very old map. And it's a very important map because it shows all the streets in Tuckerton. And it shows, you can see where some streets end and they didn't always go to the bay. And it gives the houses, and it should, you can see the size of the houses and the importance of the people, how big or a lot they had. There's like a, there's a fair over here in the middle of town and he owns a big section here, a big section here, a section up there. So the, the wealthy people owned a lot of ground in Tuckerton at one time. But there's big houses, and you see these on the corner by where the old Tuckerton Donuts used to be. And one important thing about a map is you got to find out the direction of it. So you see a little arrow here, let's say an Indian feather arrow, that's pointing north. You have north, east, south, and west. My fourth grader, Brayden, taught me Never eat slimy worms. And that's how you can remember that direction. Uh, the other thing important about the map is you see a big lake here. So that shows that there was a that lake was built by the beaver dams that they dammed in, dammed up the river to cross that lake. And they also the Indians called this the Haven of Peace. And they were here ten thousand years before the settlers came. So. That's important to note too. And it shows the Tuckerton Creek flowing down this way. And it shows Highway 1, east and west. One thing interesting is downtown Tuckerton, the road goes east and west. But if you read the signs on the Route 9, it said North Route 9. So you go north and it turns and goes north. But in town it's east and west. So east and west, north and south. One thing you have to remember is back in 1878 and even 1699 when the settlers first got here, there was no automobiles to drive around it. You had to either walk, you either had to ride a horse or ride a wagon around. So, and these were all dirt roads. And the creek was a good way to travel. You would get in a ship and go to Atlantic City, New York, where we wanted from here. And the waterways were very important back in those old days to get them around. This is the Burlington County map, and it shows you the Great Bay, and it shows you the Volca River running up this way. And the important part about Tuckerton, it shows you Tuckerton over here, and it has, you can see where Stage Road goes up this way, which is still there. And it's an old stagecoach road where they used to go from here to Camden. And they make you up one day and rest the horses for a day and drive back. That's the third day. So they did that every week. Uh, the great map, <clears throat> because it shows you all the little towns that existed back in 1872. An important thing about reading a map is scale. It says two miles to an inch. So every inch is two miles. So it's even judged distance by using that with, a, with just a piece of paper. Tucking was part of Burlington County. And up until I'm not sure the year, but it changed, and uh, Ocean County took over more ground down this way. Actually, in Ebenezer's time, President Tucker, they had to go to Mount Holly to go to court, the county courthouse. This shows the Tucker Railroad up here, and it shows that actually in 17, 1878, the line run out to the bay to Edge Grove, and then they take the train to that. Then at Edge Cove, you take a boat over to Beach Haven. So that was a very important thing for the town. That's why there was a lot of hotels in Tuckerton back in that day and age.
But this is nice, it shows you the, the turnaround here on there. And this was the end of the line here, and it went north to to Whiting, and that's where they connect with other railroads that take it to Camden or New York. Oh, that's another reason why we did, the train went to Edge Bay, because they picked up the clams right from the, they, they harvest them out of the, the bay and the ocean and put it right on the train and shipped them overnight to New York and to Philadelphia. So that was a very important part. And that got a lot of the, the, the clamors and the people living back in the through the Great Depression, because they were able to, the rich people were still eating and fell off in New York. So they were selling clams and fish and stuff like that because a train could get them there fast. I think people that are in boating and everything, they, uh, they like that because I like the, a lot of houses are right on a lagoon. So you have the water in your backyard, your boats in your backyard. So that's, that's a big draw to bring people to Duckin. Yes, there's a lot of developments that are on the water. So that's very important, yes. Maps are very important because you, if you're searching history and you go back and you, you say, look at the old maps and see who lived where and what's the size of town, what the population was and stuff like that. And it's, it's really helps you to find out what people are living like in the old days. The Tuckin Historic Society sells the map of Tuckin from the 1878 and it's, it's only a dollar for the map. So it, it tells you who lives where, it gives all the family names. So if you're searching a certain family, it's very easy to track them down to where they lived. Then from that, with a year, and then go to census records, which they also have copies of in the Historic Society. So you can find out you know, how, what their age was, how many kids they had in the census records. And the census records are done every 10 years, and New Jersey does it the, every 10 years, but on the odd numbers, the five-year section. So it's, it's easy to research things and find out a lot of things about your past and your family's past by going into the records that are saved at the Historic Society. Thank you.